What about me? Can't mess with perfection! We all know that Pixar knows how to plan Easter eggs in its movies better than anyone, but the sheer amount of references in the Cars movies is enough to blow your mind. So buckle up, Cars fans, this is gonna be one bumpy egg hunt. Number 1. The upcoming Disney Plus series, Cars on the Road, is stirring up plenty of excitement. And while we only have one trailer to go on so far, it's clear that the show is going to pay homage to Mad Max Fury Road. From the car designs to that speaker situation, Mad Max fans are sure to have plenty to notice. This is not what I expected. Number 2. The famous Pixar ball appears in many of Pixar's films, but you may recognize it best from Toy Story. In Cars, the Pixar ball is a bit more subtle. It appears in Sarge's neon sign when it lights up. It's even better than I pictured it. Number 3. You can spot Monsters, Inc.'s very own Mike and Sully watching in the background. Well, vehicle versions of Mike and Sully, that is. I'm telling you, Big Daddy, you're going to be seeing this face on TV a lot more often. Yeah! Number 4. And speaking of monster trucks, er, monster cars, there's another Monsters, Inc. monster in car form in the OG Cars movie. That looks just like a George Sanderson car. I love working with that big guy! Keep the doors coming, Charlie. I'm on a roll today. Number 5. In Cars 2, you may have spotted the Dunbrock family tapestry in the background. This is the family from Brave, but carified for the Cars universe, of course. Very good! Number 6. In Cars 3, one car makes an ever-so-subtle reference to Pixar's Coco. He mentions that his home is Santa Cecilia, and this is where Coco was set. Coco came out in November of 2017, and Cars premiered in June of that year. So it's really no surprise that Pixar wanted to pay homage to its newest movie in Cars 3. Santa Cecilia, mi pueblo! Number 7. That's probably why Cars 3 had another Coco moment. Behind Sweet Tea and her band, you can see the guitar from Coco on the wall. When life gets me down, I play my guitar. Number 8. Also in the third Cars movie, there's a reference to another famous vehicle on four wheels. This time it's Cinderella's carriage, and you can spot a small replica of it sitting on the shelf. It would be so cute if it turned into an even smaller pumpkin. A pumpkin? But a, a, a pumpkin? Mm -hmm. Number 9. In Cars 2, there's a restaurant in Paris called Gastos. This is a play on the Gusto's restaurant from Ratatouille, but it's now a car pun. Gas. Toes. Huh? What? How could he change it? Number 10. One of the cars in Cars 3 is sponsored by Triple Dent Gum. This isn't just any old gum, it's actually the gum brand from Inside Out. Careful, don't get the song stuck in your head like Riley did. The song from the gum commercial! Number 11. Bing Bong's wagon from Inside Out is at both the first and second race in the first Cars movie. Number 12. The Pizza Planet truck appears in almost all Pixar movies and is actually a character in the Cars universe. Number 13. Dynaco Gas is a pretty big part of Cars, as Lightning McQueen is literally chasing after its sponsorship. But Dynaco Gas is actually a Toy Story reference, too. This is the gas station where Buzz and Woody famously got stranded. Buzz Lightyear mission log. The local sheriff and I seem to be at a huge refueling station of some sort. Number 14. Lightyear tires are, of course, a cheeky play on Goodyear tires. This time, though, it's a Buzz Lightyear reference. You're mocking me, aren't you? Number 15. The Buzz Lightyear references on Lightning's tires actually go even deeper, but you have to look very closely. You can see that Sector 4 Gamma Quadrant is printed on the tire. That's a reference to where Buzz Lightyear says he is stationed. I'm stationed up in the Gamma Quadrant of Sector 4. Number 16. The Nice Butte bumper sticker is more than just a cheeky joke. It's another Toy Story reference. Buzz Lightyear gets this bumper sticker stuck to him in Toy Story 2. Number 17. Miss Fritter has a street sign on the side of her that says Cutting Boulevard. This same sign was in Andy's room in Toy Story 3. It also just so happens to be Pixar's old address. Number 18. Lightning McQueen's number is 95, and we see this number many times over the course of the films. This is Lightning's number because 1995 was the year that Pixar's first full-length movie premiered, which was none other than Toy Story. To infinity and beyond! Number 19. Another car's number is 86, which is, unsurprisingly, another nod to Pixar's history. Pixar was founded in 1986. Number 20. Did you spot this Apple-branded race car? Apple is very significant to Pixar because Steve Jobs actually used to be Pixar's CEO. And this car has the number 84 because that's when Apple started selling their first computers. Number 21. In Cars 2, InsuraCare offers car life insurance. 
InsureCare just so happens to be the company where Bob works in The Incredibles. It really is a small world after all, isn't it? Company is like an enormous clock. Is like an enormous clock. Number 22. Did you spot the even bigger The Incredibles Easter egg in Cars 2? The Incredimobiles is playing at the Radiator Springs Drive-In Movie Theater. Honestly, we'd pay to see that movie. <laughs> Boy, this was the best day ever. Number 23. The theater also plays Toy Car Story. We actually get to see a clip of this car version of Toy Story, and we can confirm we'd pay to see this one too. Number 24. You may have to pause to see this moment in the original cars. The sides of the trucks at the rest stop reference Toy Story, The Incredibles, Monsters, Inc., and Finding Nemo. Number 25. Miss Fritter looks a little familiar, and we're not getting the best feeling about it. She's definitely modeled after Maleficent. Just check out those horns. Well, well. <laughs> Number 26. There's nothing the Cars universe loves quite as much as a car pun. And if this video shows you anything, it'll probably be that they're very good at coming up with them. In the Cozy Cone Motel right behind Sally, you can see a framed picture of Stonehenge, but this time it's made with traffic cones, so it's Conehenge. Number 27. These two race car groupies are named Mia and Tia. Where did they get those names? They're made to look like Mazda Miatas. Get it? Mia Tia? Number 28. Even the sky in the Cars universe is on theme. You can see clouds in the shape of tire tracks in this scene. Number 29. The Cars universe simply can't resist letting other anthropomorphized vehicles make their way into the movies. Studio Ghibli fans probably noticed that Cat Bus from My Neighbor Totoro appears in the short Tokyo Mater. Number 30. If you think you're seeing things when you see A113 show up frequently, you're seeing correctly. This is the classroom number for students studying animation at California Institute of the Arts. These students often end up working for Pixar, and as a result, this number often makes its way into Pixar films as a nod to the animator's alma mater. Cars is, of course, no exception. You can spot it most obviously on the train's face when Lightning is looking for Mac. Mac? I ain't no Mac! I'm a Peterbilt for dang sake! Number 31. Since Cars pays homage to Route 66, the crew took a trip before making the movie to gain inspiration and knowledge about the film's setting. The author of the book Route 66 The Mother Road was the Pixar crew's tour guide on their Route 66 research trip. Sally says The Mother Road in reference to this when Lightning McQueen is in court. The glorious jewel strung on the necklace of Route 66. The Mother Road! Number 32. The crew probably gained more inspiration on their trip than they even anticipated. Mater is actually named after a real man they met on their trip. Mater? Yeah, like Tom Mater. Number 33. Daryl Waltrip is a real motorsports broadcaster. He voices the car broadcaster who's aptly named Daryl Cartrip. If you go to a track, you'll, you'll get in right. one you'll every right. darn time. Number 34. Car number eight is voiced by famous race car driver Dale Earnhardt Jr. And in true Pixar fashion, number eight just so happens to be Earnhardt Jr.'s number. Number 35. Car number 11 is another race car who's modeled after a real live race car driver, Mario Andretti. It's a beautiful day for a race, isn't it? Absolutely, Mr. Andretti. Number 36. Number 43 is another car with a similar background. Number 43 is Richard Petty and is blue like his real car. He also crashed in real life like his car counterpart. Oh no! Number 37. These cars are named Tom and Ray, and they're also known as Click and Clack. These are two real people from a real show about cars, Car Talk and they use their real catchphrase. Don't drive like my brother! Oh yeah, don't drive like my brother! Number 38. Luigi loves Ferraris, and if you weren't sure how much, he's sort of got a car tattoo dedicated to them. Luigi's license plate is actually the GPS location of the Ferrari manufacturing plant. A pit stop. Pit stop. Number 39. Sarge's license plate has an interesting message too. His plate reads 41WW2, meaning that he fought in World War II in 1941. The 60s weren't good to you, were they? Number 40. Even Lightning McQueen's name has a special meaning beyond just the fact that he's lightning fast. He's named after the late Pixar creator Glenn McQueen. Number 41. Lightning McQueen gets white wall tires from Luigi and Guido. You may remember these tires from somewhere else. 
They're the tires that Carl and Ellie's car had in up. All right, Luigi, give me the best set of black walls you've got. Number 42. B&L, also known as By and Large, is a corporation from Wally. You can see that that company is sponsoring one of the tracks in Cars 3. Number 43. It's pretty clear that the Piston Cup takes place in Emeryville based on that City of Emeryville sign. Emeryville, California just so happens to be where Pixar Studios is located. Number 44. Because we know the Piston Cup is taking place in Emeryville, it makes a whole lot of sense that you can actually catch a glimpse of Pixar Studios right before the race. The jets fly overhead and you can spot Pixar Studios if you look carefully. Number 45. Larry the Cable Guy voices Mater, and Mater says one of Larry the Cable Guy's famous catchphrases. I don't care who you are, that's funny right there. Number 46. George Carlin voices Fillmore, and Fillmore's license plate is actually George Carlin's birthday. George Carlin had a classic stand-up comedy bit called the Hippy Dippy Weatherman, and the voice he used for this routine sounds a whole lot like Fillmore's voice. Let's take a look at the national weather map. Number 47. If you don't know John Ratzenberger's name, you definitely know his voice. When it comes to the box office, John Ratzenberger is actually one of the most successful actors in history. How did he accomplish that, you ask? Well, Ratzenberger has voiced a character in every single Pixar movie from Toy Story in 1995 until Soul in 2020. Ratzenberger is the voice of Mac in the Cars films, and they poke a lot of fun at Ratzenberger's long list of Pixar acting credits during Cars' end credit sequence. Whoever does the voice of that piggy truck, I'm telling you, he's one great actor. Number 48. These kissing cars are named John and Nancy. They're named after ex-chief creative officer at Pixar, John Lasseter, and his wife, Nancy. Number 49. Blink and you'll miss these characters from a famous Pixar short in the original Cars movie. The birds from Pixar's short For the Birds can be spotted sitting on a wire, as they are known to do. Number 50. Amidst all those campers in the first race in the first Cars movie, there's a very subtle Pixar reference that's tough to catch. Boundin' is a Pixar short that premiered back in 2003. Its main character is a jackalope, and that jackalope is actually painted on the back of one of these campers. Sometimes you're up, and sometimes you're down. Number 51. Finn McMissile is a new character who's introduced in Cars 2, and there's plenty to unpack when it comes to this guy. Unlike most of the other characters in Cars, the shape of Finn McMissile's body isn't based on one real car. Instead, it's actually based on a mix of several different famous sports cars from the 1960s. Most notably, Finn McMissile is partially based on an Aston Martin DB5, which is none other than James Bond's car. Number 52. You've probably noticed that Lightning McQueen has a tendency to stick his tongue out pretty often. All along, you've probably thought this was just a weird quirk, but it's actually a lot more than that. Lightning McQueen's tongue sticking out is actually modeled after basketball star Michael Jordan. Whenever Michael Jordan was doing something really impressive on the court, you'd see his tongue sticking out. And it looks like Lightning McQueen has the same trademark. <laughs> Number 53. Have you ever wondered why the car's eyes in cars are in the windshield rather than the headlights? which feels like a natural place for eyes on a car. Well, there's actually a reason behind this, too. Anthropomorphized cars in cartoons tend to have their eyes where the headlights are, but Susie the Little Blue Coupe was an exception. This old Disney cartoon just so happened to be one of John Lasseter's favorite cartoons, and John Lasseter was the person who decided that the cars in cars would have windshield eyes instead of headlight eyes. So we think it's pretty clear where the inspiration for that choice came from. Number 54. There's more to Cadillac range than meets the eye. There's a rock formation in Radiator Springs that looks like the back of a Cadillac and is referred to as Cadillac Range. That's because it's a town all about cars, right? Well, actually, it's based on a real place called Cadillac Ranch in Texas. Here, there's a line of Cadillacs that are buried face down, and this is an iconic art installation along Route 66. Number 55. Another famous fixture along Route 66 is the Wigwam Motels. You can find these motels in Arizona and California, and they look a whole lot like the Cozy Cone Motel. Coincidence? We think not. There's no way you spotted all those Easter eggs, right? What did you notice that we didn't include? We want to hear about any other Easter eggs you caught in the comments. And if you love videos like this one, remember to like and subscribe to The Things Animated for more about your favorite animated content. <laughs> Boy, this was the best day ever. And my favorite souvenir... 
you are a toy car!